Hello there. In this video, I am going to configure an Spring Win XML configuration file. In my previous video, I have configured a front controller in the form of dispatcher servlet that is provided by Spring Web MVC. I have created a helper controller and annotated it with the Etheret controller annotation. So every request that will go through the front controller and it will have a URL mapping such as forward slash forward slash home forward slash index will be handled by this particular method and we are go going to use JSP as a view technology and we need to print this greeting so to integrate all these things we need to have a spring bin configuration file now in the spring bin configuration file that we are going to add we need to have a specific naming convention for creating that file so in the web.xml file the sublet name that we have given is dispatcher so the file name would be dispatcher hyphen servlet so that we don't have to do any extra configuration here now if the servlet name was xyz the file name of your spring bin configuration would have been xyz hyphen servlet so i'm going to use that convention for now and i'm going to create that file and we need to add some basic xml configuration here so to add that basic configuration I'm just going to search for spring bin configuration XML file I'm going to open this tutorials point link and I'm just going to copy the beans element configuration and rest of the thing I'm going to add manually and I'll show you a nice little trick how to do that first of all I'm going to remove this 3.0 because I need to work with the latest configuration the one that I've added inside my project and I'm going to close this beans definition once this beans definition is closed I need to add another schema here that schema belongs to context so xml ns colon context equal to so what should be the URL here so the URL I'm going to copy it from here I'm going to paste it and give it name as context. Now it also requires the schema definition file. So I always take help of this particular two lines. I'm going to paste it here. So beans, I'm going to add it as context. And here also, I'm going to add it as context. And here also, context. So that context element is available for me inside this one. Now why I am adding this context element so that I can let front controller know and this application know where the other controllers are lying and I need to use that controller. So for that I am going to add context component scan base package. So the package name here as I have kept as group id dot the artifact id. Dot the specific one that is the controller so this is how your application scan for all those component that you have annotated so here the component name is at the rate controller so this will my handler mapper that will help me to resolve the request based on the URL so once this is configured the next thing I need to configure is the internal resource view resolver so as you know in my first step I've given we need to create the dispatcher hyphen solid so make a note of the naming convention that we need to follow now we are going to configure the view result now why this view result needs to be configured the reason being in my page controller once this url is mapped to this particular handler method it is giving me the view name the view name is page but this is only the logical name not the physical name the actual file that is residing inside the views directory so I need to resolve this thing and I need to tell which view technology I am using so I am going to use an internal resource view resolver to help me to resolve this particular view and the data that I am going to pass is greeting to my view which is going to get displayed here so to configure a view resolver you need to create a bean and this bean is available inside your spring web mvc framework so I am going to give, assign it an id as view resolver the class would be org dot spring framework dot web dot servlet dot view 
dot internal resource view resolver now once this internal view resolver bean is been created i need to provide value to two property the property being name as prefix and the value equal to now where i have kept my jsp file inside web inf views directory so that will be the prefix slash web inf slash views forward slash and you need to close that property similarly you are going to provide the suffix so the physical file name ends with a dot jsp extension so i'm going to add it dot jsp here so that is the configuration that you need to do for resolving the view using your internal resource view resolver and uh, providing the value for prefix and suffix okay after doing this much configuration i need to add a server to my web application so apache tomcat is the prefer server for me so i'm going to open the server tab from here or you can open it from window show view servers now there are no server added here so i can simply add a new server no by cl clicking on this link i'm going to search for tomcat so all the tomcat related servers so the version is important so i'm going to use the version 8 and i need to configure this runtime environment because i've already configured before if you cannot find apache tomcat here so i will just show you the step i'm just going to remove it as it would be shown to you i'm just click on add and it go to apache tomcat version 8.0 click on next it will ask for the tomcat installation directory so it is extracted in the d directory so that's why it is showing it here as d apache tomcat if it is not showing here you can simply browse it and you can search for your apache tomcat directory installation where you have install apache tomcat click on okay click on finish so it would be added again click on okay click on next now it will ask me to deploy this online shopping application i'm going to add it and i'm simply click on finish once i clicked on finish you can see the online shopping war has been de deployed in this one and i'm going to start this server and open this console to look for any errors so it has started now to run your application you can simply write http co colon localhost 8080 will be the default port for most of the new tomcat installation you can also change that now online shopping is the context root forward slash and enter now i would like to show you the console so it is loading the xml build definition now once it is loaded successfully you can see that the url path slash home is been mapped to page controller similarly slash index is been mapped to page controller and everything works well then it will display you the welcome to spring web mvc message so that's how you have resolved you so whenever i type here slash index so this request will first go to your front controller now front controller takes help of handler mapper so that this url which has been mapped so the handler mapper is nothing but your page controller and this guy or uh, this controller prepares the data for me so the data would be in the form of greeting and passes on the logical view name now logical view name has been again passed to the front controller now front controller knows about the view resolver who is going to resolve the view so it is going to take help of internal resource view resolver so inside views using that logical name it is going to suffix it with dot jsp and it is going to return me the jsp page and finally that jsp page would be rendered back to the client in the form of html as a response that's why i'm getting this output so if i click here again i'm going to get the same output and if i type here home i'm also going to get the same output as well so every time that page is itself 
getting loaded now after that uh, so added apache tomcat server and last thing that i need to teach you in this particular video is adding the ghtl dependency now why i am adding this ghtl dependency you will come to know later in future videos but i would like to add that ghtl dependency right now so inside my pom.xml file I'm going to open this pom.xml file now I'm just going to copy this make sure spring it would be gstl I'll save it. You can check at libraries, Maven dependencies. Once your workspace gets built, the GSTL tag JAS has been added. So I'm going to use now the Java sh the JSP standard tag library inside my page.jsp. So first I'm going to say okay person at the red include the tag library and prefix it with the character C and the URI so the URL would be make sure it is JSP JSTL core JSP JSTL core now I'm going to after loading this JSP standard tag library I'm going to set a variable with the name of context root the value would be equal to I'm going to use an EL expression to get the value so I need to get that online shopping context root so for that I'm going to use page context dot request dot context path so that value would be stored inside this context root variable so here I'm going to use that context root variable using our el expression again I'm going to say context root says like this so once I get the context root I'm doing all this necessary confirm I'm just going to refresh it now you can see it is saying online shopping so this online shopping I am getting from my context root. So that's it for this particular video. In the next video, I'm going to or I'm going to try to make you understand what is at the rate request param and what is at the rate path variable. Thanks for watching.